Hey guys, how's it going today? It finally happened. After two long years, the king has returned. Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1, The Apostate. Oh yeah, we're doing it. Everyone, welcome to Callum Quinn Reviews. Today I will be talking at long last about the return of the Mandalorian, and I am so excited to get into it. Now, I just watched the episodes literally an hour ago at the time of recording, and I got to say it was fantastic i i can't even save that till the end of the video it was just amazing people have been like after andor was so good i was kind of like was the mandalorian as good as andor i don't know and i was completely insane that was totally wrong andor and the mandalorian are just different shows that are both perfect it's amazing. I loved it. And today I just kind of want to give my thoughts about where this whole season might be heading and what we can expect and maybe some things you saw or missed in The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1. First of all, I gotta say, really cool to see Pergil in live action. Now, if you're not familiar, Pergil are like space whales that fly through hyperspace and they were in Rebels. They're the thing at the end of that show that whisk Thrawn and Ezra into the unknown and that's why Ahsoka is looking for Thrawn in the Mandalorian and presumably in her own show so it's really exciting to see that they're definitely setting up that Rebels connection and it looks like Rebels is obviously going to be a huge part of the story going forward I have to say this is super exciting and I really expect to see Ahsoka in this season definitely to set up her own show that is going to be the next live action Star Wars show after the Mandalorian it is just so good you guys and I mean that fight scene at the beginning of the show? I guess I should start from the beginning. We open up with a new Mandalorian who is being inducted into the cavern by the armorer and is swearing the oaths when this big alligator monster attacks and we have this amazing fight and it's just cool to see the Mandalorians in their element being awesome, being kick butt. It is just an amazing action set piece. And then we see Din Djarin and Grogu fly in in that new spaceship of theirs and just blow the thing to smithereens. Then Din Djarin has a conversation with the armorer in her cave where he's saying, you know, can I find the well on Mandalore where I can bathe in the holy waters and become part of the clan again, not be an apostate anymore? And she says, it's impossible. There's no way. Mandalore is a toxic cesspool and everything was destroyed. But he says, no, no, there was proof. A traveler survived on Mandalore and brought back this piece of evidence that maybe maybe we can survive there she's like okay this is the way you go do your thing good luck I guess so then Mando goes to Navarro and meets up with Greek grief Karga sorry grand chief magistrate grief Karga and we get to see that Navarro is doing really good everybody it is a thriving prosperous trade post on this super important silk road type area of the outer rim uh, but they are having a little trouble with some pirates kind of coming in, harassing people, but Mando and Grief take care of them pretty fast. And Grief offers Mando sanctuary. He says, hey, you can, you can settle down. You can be landed gentry. We'll give you a nice plot of land and you can just settle down and be our marshal and protect us. And you can just relax with the kid. And he's like, no, man, I gotta, I gotta fulfill this quest. I gotta become a non-apostate, join my clan again. And he's like, all right, all right. But he does have a favor to ask. And so he says, can you fix IG-11? Because I I trust this droid to help me on Mandalore. And Grief is like, well, I don't think we can, but I'll try. And then we get to see Babu Frick, which, I mean, he's the best part of The Rise of Skywalker. If you remember, if you don't remember him, he's the little alien and he's in this episode too. They don't name drop him specifically, but his species and it's implied that he's there. So it's pretty cool. Nice to see that callback. But uh, they can't quite fix him and they need a, a memory card. It's like a piece they don't make anymore. So, so Din, the Mandalorian, is like, well, what if I can find this piece? Then can you fix him? And they're like, I guess so. So he's like, all right. So he goes off. And after a brief scuffle with some of the pirates that he roughed up on Navarro, obviously setting up some stuff for the future. And we've seen in the trailers, there's this big battle on Navarro with pirates and Mandalorians. And I think what they're going to do is have the Mandalorian coven with the armor move on to Navarro and have that be like a sanctuary for them. So the Navarans and the Mandalorians team up and become one society supporting and protecting each other. I think that would just be a real really wholesome and super cool idea. Who knows, we might even see Navarro become like the new main planet for the Mandalorians. Wouldn't that be something? But that aside, then he goes to a moon of Mandalore or another planet in the Mandalorian system to Bo-Katan Kryze's castle. 
castle where she's all alone because she didn't come back with the dark saber and apparently the other mandalorians just left and they're like on a mercenary band across the galaxy so that kind of stinks i was hoping to see some more action going on there but i'm sure it'll all work out i am interested to see what becomes of mando with the dark saber like is he gonna lead mandalore i don't really think that's what he wants to do i think it's more interesting if someone like bo katan leads mandalore or boba fett or maybe grogu at some point far in the future but that's it that's the end of the episode and it was a really good episode i thoroughly enjoyed it the sets were beautiful people complain that the volume is like super obvious but i can't really tell i don't really pay attention to that i guess i'm just i think it looks great and it's beautiful and the practical effects are amazing the puppetry and the prosthetics for the aliens really exciting and it definitely seems like we're setting up a future conflict with the pirates i am wondering what's going to become of the mandalorians both the children of the watch which is mandal which is mando's fraction faction and the mandalorians under bo katan's leadership as well as other groups of mandalorians like what happened with sabine's people are we going to see sabine wren in this season that would be neat i think we're going to see a lot of rebels characters showing up if not in this season then definitely in ahsoka and i am interested to see when ahsoka shows up because i think she will appear to set up her series and to help mando i also wonder about luke Maybe we could see him show up. I think we're definitely going to be getting some New Republic stuff set up in this season. And and maybe even have some scenes that are just... I mean, we see Coruscant in the trailer. So I think we'll probably see some scenes that are just straight up on Coruscant. Maybe with Mon Mothma. Maybe with Leia. It would be really cool to see some of those OT trilogy characters. OT trilogy? Anyway, I'm super excited to see what happens next. I am not sure where it's going to go. I think they might restore Mandalore. But at the same time, it might... Might be that they decide like Mandalore is a people not a place and they move to Navarro or move to one of Mandalore's moons maybe Mandalore doesn't need to be restored maybe the people need to find a new home I think that would be a really interesting direction to take it it is kind of like the ending of Thor Ragnarok I guess which I'm not really a fan of but I think it would work better here and that was a really good episode and then the other thing i wanted to talk about today was the bad batch the new episode that came out for that uh metamorphosis because i feel like they're setting up that the bad batch is going to tie into the mandoverse because first of all they have that big if you haven't seen it this new episode heavily features this mountain laboratory which is like a repository for all of the emperor's cloning tech and all of his secret scientific experiments and they have kaminoans working there and cloning and clone troopers and all this stuff and the Zillow Beast makes an appearance which is pretty exciting. I was always kind of sad they dropped that plot thread in the Clone Wars like season two the Clone Wars so it's nice to see them get back to that. I really hope the Bad Batch gets another season because I, I just feel like it's been a great show so far and I'm really excited. It was a good episode. Good like space horror and monster fights and a lot of interesting setup. Seems like now they're going to be going after Omega and maybe we'll even get next week's episode be about Rex an echo and that would be super cool i would love to see that and we still have a crosshair episode left to go but i guess i'll just quickly go through the episode step by step so it begins on the ship where this clone is being hunted and then something kills him then we cut to i forget what the planet's called but it's that mountain fortress where they're interrogating namasu the kaminoan scientist and she refuses to help so they say all right we'll bring in the prime minister of Ka of kamino and see if he can convince her then it cuts to the bad batch who are really annoyed at Sid because they're like you left us on that planet and you didn't help us at all and she's like yeah 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 whatever whatever and so they're thinking like maybe we should just leave Sid but she knows about us what are we gonna do so that's super interesting um but she gives them the coordinates to this ship she got a tip on the ship that has the Zillow beast on it spoilers and they go down and they're looking in the ship and they find Kamino and cloning technology and then the Zillow beast attacks them and it keeps absorbing energy and growing bigger and they're fighting it then the Empire shows up and subdues it like they did in the Clone Wars with this energy beam and then they take the Zillow Beast and they leave and the Bad Batch sees this and they're like oh they're not just killing it they're taking it to use it for something there's more to this than we thought so they go to they contact Rex and Echo and I think that's what we're going to see in the next episode is them Rex and Echo going on a mission to find out more about this and then we get the last credit scene or not an end credit scene but the last scene of the episode is the the Kaminoan Prime Minister showing up and talking to the guy in charge of the laboratory and saying the key to getting Namasu to cooperate is this clone named Echo, a young girl. No, this clone 
named Omega a young girl. Sorry, got confused. And they're going to be hunting Omega now, which ties in the Bad Batch, who they still think is dead, but they know someone saw what happened to the Zilla Beast. And so they're kind of looking on two different tracks for the Bad Batch, even though they don't know it yet, which is really exciting. And I feel like this is all going to tie into the Mandalorian because they're cloning. They're talking about the asset. Baby Yoda is referred to, Garogu is referred to as an asset by the Imperial Remnant. And I feel like we might even see this mountain base because Thrawn will be using it to get technology and stuff. So I think it's all coming together. I mean, remember, Dave Filoni is heavily involved in The Mandalorian and in The Bad Batch and in Ahsoka, along with Jon Favreau. I think there's a master plan here that we're really going to see play out, and I'm super excited. But that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.